Hi everyone. everyone. Welcome back to The Book Brood, and today we're going to be talking about book problems, uh, two specific book problems. The first one being books that we would like to read, are going to read, feel we should read. Feel we have to read. But that we're not excited about, or almost don't want to read. And the other is books that we are saving for a special time or a special treat. So... Book problems. First one for me of book that I don't want to read. So this one's on my list. Um, it's Connie Willis's Doomsday Book. I've heard a lot of great praise about her as an author. Um, she's you know well renowned in the genre, uh, but her specialty is time travel, and it's just not a subgenre that I particularly enjoy or kind of just becomes frustrating because I think of all these paradoxes and time loops that it could be creating, but. I haven't read anything by her, so I don't know at all how she handles time travel, so it's a little unfair, but it's one I'm avoiding. I feel like I talk about this all the time, but I am avoiding The Count of Monte Cristo because it is the biggest book on our shelf, and the language is intimidating, but it is one I definitely feel like I have to read. It's a classic. Um, I know the basics of the story. I've seen a couple of movie adaptations, and I really enjoy the story, so I feel like I need all of the detail. Mm. It's intimidating. I know. I want to read that one, too, eventually. But. All right, the next one for me is Greg Bear's The Forge of God. Uh, another author I haven't read yet, so I don't know their style or anything. It's just the synopsis sounds... The synopsis sounds like you don't know where the story's going for a long time. It's just very mysterious. Some object appears in a desert, and so scientists are trying to figure out what it is, and... You know, and it's funny because I can be so forgiving to some authors mm -hmm. because I know that's their style, that you that everything's a mystery until like two thirds through, like Neil Stevenson. Oh my and, gosh. And, but, you know, I'm not willing to give this a chance yet. And it's fallen off the list too. It's, it was, oh. it was in like the bottom, you know, bottom five or something. But does it pop back up every once in a while? It actually doesn't. No. Really? Yeah, it hasn't for a year now or something. Okay. Next book on my list is The Help. I never read it when it was really popular, but I do feel like I should read it, but the story sounds really boring. And so eventually I will have to read it, but 500 pages about what slavery and civil rights yeah, issues. I think so, yeah. I don't know. And that makes me a horrible person, I'm sure, for not wanting to read it. Yeah, he's saying yes. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay. I don't want to read about it either, so I'll just stay mom on that. There you go. All right, the next one for me is Xenocide by Orson Scott Card. This is the third uh, or fourth um, fourth story in the Ender series. Um, I always do this to myself. I always like don't root for Orson Scott Card, and I put reading his books off, but then I always do. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty good. You always enjoy them. Yeah, so far, at least uh, two for two so far. Uh, but, you know, I was just, uh, I was fine where Speaker for the Dead left off. And so it's just kind of, I feel like it's unnecessary, but it's on the list, so I have to. But it's on the list. Mm -hmm. Another one I talk about a lot, I feel like, is Cloud Atlas um, by David Mitchell. I love the movie. I love, love, love love the quotes and the lyricism in the movie. I really hope it, it it actually comes from the book. But the different perspectives and the way that it spans so much time is... Uh, it gives me a headache just thinking about it. <laughs> so I'm putting that off. All right, and the next one for me is Ilium by Dan Simmons. Uh, this one, it's kind of big and it's sort of one of those like mashups of sci-fi and and like gods and oh I think God, this one's I like Greek song gods up. or something and I just it, I it's just it's just a weird concept and I haven't read anything like that before and so I'm putting it off and it just it sucks too because Dan Simmons is very famous as well and, and Hyperion's one of the most praised science fiction books ever 
Uh, it's, it's, it's not connected at all to Ilium, but, but yeah, but I'm sure it's good because they're on the list. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when we were looking for the best first um, first line of a book yes. for a tag a while ago, yeah. mm-hmm. I started, I opened mm-hmm. this one and I read the first sentence and then I read the first paragraph and then I read like almost the entire first chapter because nice. I really got sucked into that one. It's interesting because, well, well, I'll mention it when I talk about the next one. Oh, okay. Another one for me is one, or yeah, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which I actually got, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the way through at one point. But it's one of those classics that a lot of people absolutely love. And it just feels dated. And so it was difficult for me to get in to the dialogue is... um, confusing to me but it's one of the classics that I feel like I need to read Ken Kesey is kind of a local uh, local uh, historical figure in, in our area he, yeah. he lived around here so yeah and my next one mm. is Richard Zelazny's Lord of Light I was kind of intrigued by this one or actually I don't know because you know this is the same kind of thing as Ilium. It's like gods and and but mix of sci-fi. Like, but I guess the title intrigued me. Um, but especially since what you've been saying about how just how much you've been struggling with reading I this finally, one has made, has made me frightened of it. I finally figured out what it was. Mm-hmm. It's it's the voice of the narrator mm-hmm. of most of it. Mm-hmm. Is just I can't stand it. It makes me want to fall asleep but there are some perspective mm-hmm. when it's actually from uh sam's point of view which is very rare but when yeah. it's, it's usually on the outside looking at him uh-huh. as a character but when it's actually looking like from his perspective i like that mm-hmm. and that makes sense but And the last one, I've had this book for, I don't know, at least a dozen years, Crime and Punishment. I feel like it's a classic, and I've never read it, but it really intrigues me. Um, I just can't seem to pick it up. But, yep, yep, 500 pages of classic. Yeah, that one's been floating around since we've met. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right, and so that does it for our feel like we have to read, but we don't want to. Mm -hmm. Our next stack is uh, the books that we are anticipating are going to be good, and so we're waiting to, like, treat ourselves with them. Save them for a special time. Mm -hmm. All right. So mine is, I'll start with the first one that I've got, is Julian May's The Many Colored Lands. Uh, When I found this one at a local bookstore, uh, the guy working on the counter was uh, was kind of gushing to me about it, how it was a really good series and everything. So I'm pretty excited about uh, pretty excited about getting to this one. And so I've I've just been putting it off for a long time. <laughs> as, you know, I feel like I need to you know trudge through some of the uh, some of that yeah. list we just went through first before I can get to the things I'm really excited about. So. But it's on your list, right? It is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, I recently hauled this. This is Lockstep by Carl Schroeder. Um, Sci-fi. I'm actually really looking forward to this story. It sounds so intriguing. And I've heard... I've heard that you absolutely love it or you absolutely hate it, but I think I'm going to love it. And I'm kind of saving it for when I'm really feeling some heavy sci-fi because it is serious sci-fi. Cool. Yeah. All right, my next one is Alistair Reynolds' Revelation Space. This is a story about uh, uh, investigation of a species that became spacefaring and then all of a sudden disappeared. Um, and I've, again, I've, I've heard a lot of good things about this book, particularly um, about Alistair Reynolds just in general. Uh, and so I have a feeling that I'm really going to like this one. I like distant future sci-fi is my favorite subgenre. And so, yeah, saving it for a special time. Okay, another one that I am saving is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. And this, I've heard, is a really fun 
uh, story. It's about a heist. So it's a bunch of anti-heroes, and I absolutely love anti-heroes. Um, this is book one in a duology, and I think the next one is coming out, like, in the next six months, maybe. So I might just... I don't know. I'm I'm really looking forward to this, and I hear nothing but good things. But I just haven't felt like I could treat myself yet. The time isn't right. The time's not right. Yeah. yeah. All right, the next one I have is The Cyber Raid by Stensla Lem. And, you know, I know I was talking in my my uh, TBR for this month of August that I was really kind of getting annoyed with retro mm-hmm. <laughs> retro futurism, but this one looks completely retro futurism. Yes, but for some reason, probably the name uh, just intrigues me. And I actually, and I haven't even read anything by Lem yet. Uh, I have Solaris and this one is, is are on the list to read. And so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. The cover looks way more beautiful in person it's all shiny and yeah it's got this reflective yeah yeah that's nice okay another one i am saving is a night circus or the night circus by aaron morgenstern and i hear that this is absolutely beautiful and everyone is so sad when it ends because they don't want it to end and i know that i'm absolutely going to love this i just um I don't know. Maybe wait until closer to fall. I don't know. It feels like a kind of cold day, snuggle up Mm -hmm. and read it kind of a thing. All right. And my next one is Robert A. Heinlein's Have Space Suit Will Travel. Uh, This one, again, I hear a lot of great things about. It's about a kid that wins a science fair and gets a space suit. And so he uh, ends up embarking on a journey all the way to Pluto. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That's awesome. Okay, this is almost like embarrassing how excited I am for this book. This is The Merciless uh, by Daniel Vega. And this is like a guilty pleasure book, I'm sure it's going to be. It's very YA. It's about this group of girls who are like mean girls, I guess, but are super crazy. And they um, try and exercise one of, like, the new girl in school, and it turns into, like, a really scary situation, and there's, there's, like, a cult, and I don't know, I'm so excited for this book, I don't, I don't even know. That actually sounds a little interesting. Yeah. (laughs) All right, my last one is City by Clifford Simak. Civilized human disappears kind of from Earth, and what takes its place is Canines become sentient and have created oh, society. Yeah. And and at this point in time, uh, that, that's a culture that's been established for a long time. Uh, but the crux of this story is that humans are starting to reappear. And so mm. it just it just sounds ex- extremely intriguing. Yeah, I, Amy and I pulled that randomly off the shelf and re- read the description and it mm. sounded really good. And the last one for me is Blacklands by Belinda Bauer. And I'm really excited. I've had this for a long time, and I've just been saving it. It's a very tiny little book. Um, It sounds like it's a kind of cat and mouse uh, situation with a teenage boy and a serial killer who is writing him from jail. And he's, like, making the kid do his bidding or whatever. But not kill people, Uh but, like, I mean, maybe eventually. I don't know. But it sounds like it's going to be really intense and it's going to be a really quick read because mm-hmm. I'm not going to want to put it down. It's going to oh, be yeah. a one sitting yeah. sort of book. Um, and I'm excited for that, but I don't know when I'll have the chance to do that. Mm-hmm. All right. So that is our book problems. Book problems. Book problems there. Big problems. Also, hopefully soon we will have our background back. We got a new fish tank and it's really super loud and we've got to figure out how to um, make it not so loud for our videos. Um, So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. If you have book problems, you should uh, make a video about your book problems or about the same book problem. (laughs) Link it to us, please. Let us know your book problems. (laughs) Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time.